What's up everybody, my name is Elliot, and look, I'm back in the studio. Not only that, but I'm giving you an awesome chance to help support the growth of this channel. I've partnered with veteran-owned small business GetEnteredToWin.com to bring you this awesome chance to win the BMW 135i Canyon Carver project that Matt Farah has been building on his channel. All you have to do is go to GetEnteredToWin.com slash Elliot Alvis, buy this awesome mug that features a Corvette and a guy and a quote from yours truly and my logo, and you'll be automatically entered to win the amazing BMW 135i Canyon Carver project that Matt Farah is building. So not only will you be getting this awesome mug, but you'll be genuinely supporting the growth of this channel by purchasing the first real piece of merch I've ever offered just in time for that chilly fall weather. So again, all you have to do is go to getentertowin.com slash Elliot Alvis, buy your awesome Corvette guy mug, and you'll be automatically entered to win Matt Ferris BMW. Thank you guys for your support and good luck. Yes, welcome back to the studio, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since I've been in here doing anything with any of my own cars. So I figured it was time to do a fleet update because a lot's changed. Stuff is going on with these cars and one of them isn't even here anymore. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's been difficult to get back into the studio because I've had multiple family emergencies that have made it difficult both emotionally and time-wise to actually get back in here and work on my own stuff. But I appreciate your patience while I try to get back to it. That being said, let's get back to it, starting with the Kartrek Maserati. Switching to handheld mode here, yes, this is the 2003 Maserati Coupe GT that was used in Car Trek. It's definitely my favorite car, or certainly the first one I picked to drive for car shows, cars and coffee, anything like that, because I mean, look at it. It's flashy, it looks like a race car, kids love it. It's pretty much the perfect choice. Now, that being said, the last time you guys saw it on the channel, it was having some issues. I had broken the shift linkage, taking this thing out on a track for filming of Car Trek 6, and I kind of put it back together using some form of Model A technology, and I showed that in a previous video. Now, that repair is still holding up very, very well, but there are a number of little tiny things and a few big things that still need to be fixed on this car. One, I can take care of fairly immediately and plan to do so soon. Like, let me show you. Inside the interior that has been totally reassembled, there's been one gaping problem, and it's, uh, well, the lack of speakers in the doors. But I have new speakers for it, finally, and they can be installed soon. Up until now, I've just been listening to speakers in the rear, which are good enough, but I mean, it should be better. Anyway, the only other things going on on this car are the fact that it needs all new suspension and pretty much bushings all the way around, but I've priced that out and it's going to be like four to $7,000. And it's not dangerous right now, but it's not an emergency for me to fix that. So I'm going to wait on that until well, I'm doing a little bit financially better. Let's just put it that way. This car is still just my go-to car. Since you've last seen it, I've done a number of car shows, cars and coffees. I even got to take it to this Boy Scout event where the winner of the Pinewood Derby got to ride in it and show up and arrive to the next Pinewood Derby and all of his like scout members got to see him and clap and celebrate. The Maserati got to be kind of the star of the welcome party. That was neat. I love this car. It's still definitely my go-to. And even though it's got some stuff, it's still one of the most reliable cars cars that I own. Now, on to the next vehicle. Up next in the Elliott Alvis fleet is the trusty, and in this case, extremely dusty, Free MW. Now this car I offered up for sale in a previous video, but realistically, I just can't replace it for its justified value. Even if somebody were to give me like $5,000 for this thing, I can't get anything nearly as cool as this 1998 BMW 528i with a manual. Sure, it still has its fair share of issues. It needs new suspension all the way around, definitely a valve cover gasket, and if you wanted to go crazy, some paintwork because well, look at it. But the simple fact is, no matter if somebody gave me even a pretty insane amount for it, I just can't replace it. And it's a really, really good spare car that I even had to use the other day. You never know when you're gonna need a spare car. And this BMW happens to be the perfect one. And I just can't justify getting rid of it. So there's the update on that. If you wanna see more free MW content, let me know in the comments because I really could do some suspension work on this thing and make it even better. That's about all there is to report on this one. I didn't sell it because it didn't make any sense. Now, let's talk about some of the other stuff over here. Next up on the top level of the lift under a cover is the car I will never sell, my 1992 Corvette 
and uh, well, there's only so much of it you can see from down here, but I'll cut to some shots of what it looks like on the ground. Now its status goes like this. For a number of years, it's needed some stuff, namely tires. Like, let's look at this. These are 28, 2008 date code Eagle F1s, and in certain spots they're showing cords, and in the back, they don't even have a matching set of tires. But the thing that it needs is tires, it needs probably some suspension bushing stuff, possibly a clutch because the throwout bearing makes noise, and most importantly, the brakes. The brakes on this car are awful. You step on it and it's like a Flintstone brake. It just feels like a rock and nothing happens. No matter how hard you stomp on it, even with both feet, you can't get this thing to lock up the wheels and make the ABS come on. Something is up with the braking system on this car and I just need to address it. Now, possibly if I make some more shuffling around here, this will probably become more of a focal point on the channel because I really would like to get this car to the point where I can drive it again. And right now it's actually sitting up there with a full tank of old gas. So even then I should probably drive it sooner than later. So that's what's going on with the Corvette. Of course, the elephant in the room, the car you guys have all been wondering about, the Volvo. And as you can see, it's still here, which is great. But the problem is, well, let me show you. There's nothing back here because we got no turbo, Ted. It's a Fast and the Furious reference, but we do have a turbo actually. So check this out. The turbo is right here in this box, ready to go on. And parts for it, like gaskets and stuff, are right there. So it's ready. I just have not had the time to actually put it on, but luckily for you guys, that has become a major priority and will be happening within the week. So that is the status of the Volvo. Sometimes family emergencies make it difficult to work on stuff or film or do anything, but now it's time to make the Volvo happen. It's been sitting here for far too long and I know you guys miss it, but the good news is I still have it and it's ready to rock. Of course, if you guys have noticed, there is one car I haven't mentioned making it sort of the other elephant in the room or the elephant that's not in the room. And for that, we need to go back to me from the past. Take it away, Elliot, a while ago. Okay, so this section of the fleet update is just gonna be a pinch out of order if you can't tell by my hair and outfit change, but currently I am out of town working as a production assistant on the next two seasons of Car Trek, which is really, really cool. But during that time, the car that's leaving is also going to leave, and I'm actually not going to be here to see it leave. But there's a few things I need to do to it to ensure that it can go on its journey peacefully. And the car I'm talking about, of course, is the 300 TD from Car Trek Season 5. I'm selling it to a guy named Spencer who's flying all the way from California to Wichita, Kansas to then drive it back to California. Now, of course, this car's up to the task. It was up to the task when I drove it back from Atlanta to here, except at that point, it didn't have air conditioning, so I just had to sweat it out. Now, at this point, I've fixed a few things and it does have air conditioning. Unfortunately, it still has a bit of a leak, but when I had it, it leaked out within about 15 minutes of a full recharge. Currently, it leaks out over the course of about a month. Now, I want Spencer to have a comfortable drive back to California because it sure isn't gonna be a fast one. The least I can do is make sure that this system is topped off and then we can check what else it needs before it'll be on its way. We only have one little can of refrigerant, so I'm not sure if it's gonna do the trick on this, considering it's pretty empty, but I guess we'll see. Okay, quick cut. We actually had to run to O'Reilly's to get more refrigerant because that one measly can wasn't enough to do it, but no problem. We got three more cans and this thing should be ice cold in no time. It's Luke cool right now, I would call it, if that's a phrase. See, there we go. Electric fan is on. These are good signs. These are good signs. I mean, it feels good in here. This would keep me cold on the highway for sure. Better than I ever had it. Isn't it funny how we do things like that though, as car guys? You live with things so long, and then right when you go to sell it is when you fix it, and then you don't even get to enjoy it when it's fixed. Whatever, it's just one of those things. I think homeowners do that too. All right, so I recharged the AC kind of late in the day, so this is kind of the last drive of my ownership of the 300TD. Windows up, AC going, 100% Jake is with us, and I'm doing the last 
best thing that you should do when you sell a car. So taking it and I'm filling it up with gasoline or diesel in this case. Yeah, the expensive one. Yeah, only the best. Yep, the finest kerosene for this 300 TD. I don't remember which side the pump is on. It probably matters. Just pull up like equidistant between the two pumps. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> Whoa! Okay. Idiot. <laughs> this is how much I have not had to fuel up this car. What do we got here? Oh, good. It's, wanna, it's cheap. Oh, I thought you were going to look at my pin number. All right. Yeah, this will be good. 450 still. How do you open it? I think you just push on the other side. Yeah. Oh. Secret. Fancy. Your fuel, yes. sir. Ew. Oh, it's just, you know, yeah. it happens sometimes. It's been yeah. a while. <laughs> how much do you think this will be? I don't I but, genuinely but, know but. how empty it is. I'm because... saying 50 bucks. Phillips are 50 bucks, that's just the rule. Maybe, it might just blast right on past it. That's okay. Wouldn't that be? Oh, oh, off by. Well, you're still close. I was off by. Oh, I four bucks. I guess I didn't make a guess, but. Well, this actually is the last time I'm gonna be driving this car, because like I said, I will be out of town when it changes hands, which is weird. I, I like how well the seats hold, hold me in. It's for luxury, not for sport. You know what's not luxurious? Falling out of my seat. All right, well, Jake, thanks for being here for the final drive. This is only the second time I've actually been in this car, and uh, I've always liked these. I, they're very good looking. I like the reliability, the weirdness of the diesel, the long roof. It's a quality built vehicle. I mean, this is the, you don't need to take care of it, and it will still run poster child. And like, let's hope that it continues to run for the It will. Spencer, this is going to make it to California. No problems. And just as a little bonus here at the end, it wouldn't be a fleet update video without mentioning the car I drive every day, the Prius. And the Prius is totally fine. It doesn't need anything except for maybe an oil change. This thing is an absolute workhorse. Make fun of them all you want, but this has been the best daily driver I have ever had, and it rules. So that actually concludes the fleet update. All right, back to the studio. All right, well, how's that for a fleet update? Stuff is still broken. The Kartrek Mercedes is gone, but the Volvo's still here and the Maserati still rules. Remember to go to getentertowin.com slash Elliot Alvis using the link in my description to get entered to win that awesome BMW and more importantly, get that really cool mug. And in fact, once you guys get your mugs, send me pictures of them and I'll put them on my Instagram story. I'm super stoked to have some merch. And with you guys going to getentertowin.com to buy yourself that merch, you automatically get entered to win a BMW. It's a win-win-win. You directly support the channel and you get the chance to win Matt Farah's BMW. Everything is great. Thank you guys for watching as always. Be sure to follow me on my various social media that I have undoubtedly started flashing below here in my future editing state. But thank you guys for sticking with me. I'm getting back to the regular content. Have a good day and I will see you guys on the next video. And it wouldn't be a fleet update video without... Gotta wait for a plane. It's Kansas. Oh my... Yeah, it's a good that one. That is a... Man, whatever neck tech is... Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, once you get it on there... Yeah. Look at that. Dude. Yeah, that is like... The dash... It's deceptively strong. The dash moves. <laughs> that is crazy. Well, good work. I need I need whatever that is neck in my tech. car. Neck tech. Neck tech. Neck, 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 technology. Neck, neck, neck tech. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll take this from here. <laughs>